This is the second half of redoing every single one hero test in the game. With a mod that turns every hero ability to be a permanent, but a weaker and balanced version of it. Again, here is a list of the highest rounds each hero got to unmodded, for reference. Half Fusty, last we tried it, only got to round 49, but that was before Resort came out. And uh, I think I've seen a couple of people mention this, but yeah, so you can definitely get further on Pat Fusty on Resort. Simply by putting him in this square. So before I test the um, permanent version of it, I'm just going to test the uh, unmodded to see uh, the highest round and then compare it. So far, I gotta say this run is absolutely flawless. Pat is just smacking everything around. And here we go, Mona Truth, round 49. So here come the Rams. I'm just going to go ahead and use the ability now for the extra plus one damage and uh, let it go to town. Maybe I'll put it in first just to catch the pinks. I don't know what the best course of action is. Uh, either way, ability not having a, a lot of um, yells to pinks leak is bad. Let's see if we can salvage some leaks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, let's see what I gotta do here then. Maybe back on first for these Rams there. And then back on strong. Just try to get everything down to as low as possible. And then back on first for this Ram here. Come on. Nice. You got a knockback on it. Do I use... I'll use an ability here. I don't know. Does it even help? And the regrows coincide at the same time are annoying, but I think if I if I survive here, I'll just take it. Screw getting that many lives. Good enough for me. 49 should be the hardest, considering we're going to get even more damage very soon. Again, mobs on Pat are an absolute piece of cake. Nice. And then now, level 11. Smooth sail all the way to round 60 here. I think I'll definitely just get rid of that BFB layer real quick. And into the 61s we go. Level 13 gets us um, more stunning. I can certainly feel the difference there. So indeed, it's been a long time coming. I could have done this ever since Resort got released. Uh, well, that's okay. Better late than ever. I think 63 is finally the end, though. That's just too many yellows. I will try to see what the ability does. Oh, it turns into reds. That's way better. Okay. But the problem is that I don't have the ability up for the entire time. So that's going to be a rip to the other wave. Right? Because again, if it turns into yellows, it's over. And it's over. Now, I don't expect the promo version of Pat to do any better. At least, like, if it can beat 63 or not, because as you see, it's not permanent. There's only, it's just more uptime overall on level 3. So I think we still run into the same issues. Now, the question is can we actually make it to 63 with not being able to control when we use the ability? Because again, in a way, it is worse against the. Cerams here. I'll try the same method last. Oh, that's not good. All these pinks here. I'm um, back on strong now. I mean, we can still leak lives. That's not a big deal. Um, okay, 157. That's fair. And probably leaking some more here. 65. Uh, if we're alive, we're alive. I don't care. Nope, regrows. I guess what I could do is I could just relocate the uh, um, village. I think this might be a better grow blocker spot. All right, and again here. Uh, First, and I think this does it, unless that's a real farm. Um, it is a real farm, but I can hold off. Nice. It might be easier to beat these rounds here because uh, Pat, while sucking in, still does the main attack, which is a nice benefit. But again, there's no mobs at 63, so <laughs> should suffer the same fate. Yep, same fate indeed. Uh, GG. And now for a hero here that will undoubtedly get very far, Adora. Round 111 in the normal test. However, I should mention that she got nerfed since then. Lost Fortify damage. So don't be surprised if it doesn't make it to 111. In fact, I don't expect it all to get close to it after those nerfs. And again, for reference, the true sun god Adora got to round 140, which we'll test later. So for those who haven't seen the, uh, how uh, the permanent Adora works, you basically just go in debt to give her XP. And I'll go ahead and do so, because at the end of the day, it's just dead. What's cool is that, uh, depending on how much money I sacrifice, you can see Adora's range slowly get bigger and bigger. Because she gets range and attack speed. Here it is at maximum. Don't mind me, you're just going to massive debt to attend a BTD6 science school here. And because of this maximum sacrifice, we have now reached level 20 on round 56. And I don't know if we can go any further in debt, because it only takes $33 per second now to have a permanent Adora. At maximum. Look at the amount of range she can get at level 20 with a max sacrifice. It is pretty nutty. And I guess the permanent level 3 ability does give us, do, does allow us to get this massive range in the first place. So which round here? Okay, 103 looks scary because it's all fortifies and without that fortify damage, uh, I don't know about this, guys. Regardless, keep in a door on first. 
And I lied. It's actually, she's still actually pretty good. Honestly, I think having a Primitive Ball Light here, even though it's weaker, is just really good. It's one of those things with Noma Door that without it, she's just so much weaker. When it was 7 here, honestly, is it okay? I think we're gonna be able to tie this despite the nerfs. Impressive. Wow, I'm impressed. Maybe it's fine the level 3 doesn't seem to be super nerfed, at least, I don't know. That looks to be about the power that a, a, a normal level 3 Adora would possess, but it's hard to tell again. I almost assuredly expect death here because there's just too many ZMGs. Uh, fortified ones at that, too. Let's see. We're actually getting pretty close. A lot closer than I would have given it credit for. But no cigar. One more try. Who knows? Maybe some strong targeting will do the job. The thing is, you can still manipulate to do more damage by having the beam of the ball light pass over as much as possible. Because, yes, that does affect it. It's just super sketchy, though, and nope. Strong just makes things um, worse in the other hand. Uh, maybe first earlier, like this? Nope. 111 is not beatable. And now, if you excuse me, True Sun got a door here. Should make for an absolutely massive difference. Let's just sell it off. Uh, it's like plus 8 damage or something like that, and indeed... Absolutely blows by 111 here. BD damage? Not half bad. But I don't think it has any chance at 140, looking at that. 130, it's always scary, but... Uh, Bald Light holds off, and Mona Truth. Does this possess enough damage? 2,000 DPS, approximately. I... Uh, don't think so. Actually, I think we'll pop it, but I think we died to the ZMGs, right? Depends how late this is. Or FDTs. Oh, so close. But that's not happening. If I remember at all how the one at TN test did last time, it's that I need to add a MIB, like, extra strong cash to afford one, because I died to leads. I can't afford this a time before I, I die. Just double-checking, making sure here, so uh, I leak a bunch here. And then I died around 40, because- or around 30, because I am $2,000 short. Good to know. Now that we got MIB, though, the round to make it to, or to beat, is 95, which I doubt is gonna happen. Because, I mean, technically the UCAP is already permanent once you get level 20. It's just a matter of, uh, I don't know, whether consistency is better than a burst. This is just an observation, but I'm pretty sure this UCAP here uh, shoots a little bit slower. Because it is the permanent stronger version. Oh my god, we almost died to 92. Uh, yep. I think we're gonna tie it at best. Just a matter of being 94 here. Yep, 94 is easy. 95. It's a GG, guys. Let's see how far we can make it, though. Answer is not even close without having the ability to micro anything at all. Sheesh. What is this, football slash soccer? Because it's all ties today. Sada never fails to disappoint me, so I expect big things to come out of her. 108 is the round to beat. Unfortunately, one big problem here is that Sada's rework, quote-unquote, where she does more damage now with Moonsaur stunned slash slowed, plays terribly in our favor in terms of the one hero test. So I'm not sure what round I'm expecting here, but hopefully Elite speeds, I don't know, around 100 or so. As you can see, the permanent version of Sada here just simply throws swords in the air more often than the ability originally comes up with. Same with the sword charge. Happens more often, and the benefit is that Sada keeps attacking while those abilities are going on. Which I think was a big problem last time. Not being able to get more DPS when I use the abilities. In fact, losing DPS. In fact, here's see again. How often does this um, sword attack occur? We got one here. When does the next one come out? Oh, it comes out pretty often, in fact. Wow. Look at that. Once she's done, it only takes like a couple seconds of downtime. And she's back at it. The greatest thing about this permanent thing is that we don't get just one, but now we have two Sodas of the field. At once. Now, I am very curious to see what level 20 does. Because Sword Charge does it three times, uh, originally. But how it is, uh, how do they make it balanced this way? It seems like the downtime is about the same. So I guess the Sword Charge ability is just simply stronger. I mean, if you look at the damage there. Let's just hope it makes a difference here. So, 98 has a lot of balloons, but nothing two Sodas can handle. DDT is also solid. BAD damage. Also uh, solid enough, but I think barely. Come on. DDT is nice. And then ZMGs. Uh, this is going to come down to the wire here. Uh, bad timing. Don't tell me we can't beat 100 here. Who knows, maybe resetting the round changes timing, and then that makes some... Um, no, that makes us die to this part now. Sheesh. There is nothing I can change here. Because, uh... It, well, there's no abilities to... Alter. <laughs> I'd say the only thing I can allow myself to do here is just tinker with the placement a little bit. So, I'm just resetting from 100 again with a level 20. Sometimes changing just one pixel... Is massive. So, see here? Yep. 
that pixel mattered. What does this mean for Sada's legacy, though? For the last couple of ZMGs. I need a new one. Coming out. Nope. Depending on what happens here, Sada just might end up being the most disappointing one. I'm getting a couple lives. But this is a pretty massive round downgrade. If I can't clutch up here. And we're not going to, because even if Sada came out, she would only beat the mobs, not the Rams. Sada, you are the biggest loser. Now, the original side got to round 100, but that's only with the stipulation of giving um, them enough money to be able to deal with mobs around 40. And thus, they made it to round 100. Therefore, I'm just going to skip all the way to round 80 and see how uh, how far level 20 can make it. Simple as that. This might just be the quickest test we have to do here. So basically, the level or the permanent ability has an occasional stun. It happens often, but it's a very, very, very weak stun. It's here where it could really use the level 10 ability to, like, just turn all these... DDTs to mush, but it seems like it only pulses. It doesn't do it often enough, nor does it work at all DDTs, so it's actually another downgrade. Unless we can clutch up here. Wait, wait, it's not over. Wow. <laughs> it was almost over there. It's definitely over here, right? Yes. So if I'm looking at this correctly, so far, none of the permanent hero abilities have done any better, like round wise. I've seen a couple, starting with, you know, Gwen and Quincy that do look like they would be better, like marginally, but round-wise, they stayed the same. Sai, minus five rounds. And lastly comes Geraldo, which should be a very interesting test for, uh, well, obvious reasons. Uh, to reiterate again how permanent Geraldo works, some of the items here are permanent, some of them are temporary, because you can't make them permanent, like for example, glue or stack old nails, but you can get a permanent creepy idol for only 1.2k, or permanent jar pickles. Firstly, though, I think I want to wait for the upgraded versions of these items. So I don't waste money early game getting stuff that will eventually inevitably become stronger. Because right now, Strato can deal with all this just fine. Now, just like last time, I think I have to sell the NFT this round to uh, be able to afford the Jerry Fire. Because worst of all, even worse here is that even if I did have the money somehow to come up with it and spend this and then 2 2k on this thing. Well, just simply put, I, I wouldn't be able to afford it. Like, well, that's only empty, especially since this Jerry Fire is now much more expensive, expensive. But, again, permanent. I don't think there's any scenario where I can buy back the NFT, considering I'm not making any money anymore, so that's a rip. Would have been nice. I'm still actually going to hold up Hope, though, and see, because I think I'm getting closer. Only 4k off now. Actually, am I getting closer? I, I think I am. 3k now. Last time I didn't do this, for whatever reason, I didn't think I could make enough money, but round 40s are stonks. I might even consider selling, or no. No, I'm, I'm just going to hold on to it. Screw it, tank the purples here. There we go. We got it back. This is worth the investment 100%. Trust me. As you can see, again, it's quite fascinating how the uh, one hero with Geraldo plays out. Much differently than all other heroes, because I'm not spending... I don't want to spend money on power leveling him. The money's better spent getting those uh, permanent towers, especially once the genie comes around. Can't wait for the upgraded one. I'll still spend money on Shui turrets. I think I'll do a creepy idol too. If they are permanent, it's definitely worth it, because we can get so many of them. And then just get, like, infinite blowback. Infinite knockback. And then let me finish off with my fourth bunny to get the uh, mega evil bunny, which is unchanged, I believe. I think due to my incompetence last time, we might be able to actually beat the the highest round. 111. So I believe the original Geraldo may not even have been able to do, even if I did redo it. Because uh, I guess it was less about the money back then and more about the cooldown. So, okay, never mind. I didn't blunder last time. There was just simply nothing to spend the money on. So, the camo got upgraded, so I permanently gave Geraldo the camo, which gives us plus one damage to DT. is very nice. I think I'll wait again. It's enticing to spend 25k on the genie bottle, but I'll wait for, I think, level 18. That's what it is, right? Um, here's Sharpening Stone. I will permanently give it to the upgraded Shui Turrets here. Okay, and now Jerry Fire is upgraded, so uh, here's some more. If I remember correctly, these Jerry Fires are not really any weaker, so this is just like a permanent damage boost. Throughout all aspects of the game. You just love to see it. Here is now the genie. Ladies and gents. Two of them. For 50k. And they're the exact same power. And that's probably where the majority of my money should go into. If money is an issue. In fact, I probably shouldn't be spending so much on like. Jerry Fire. Am I even going to be making 25k every 6 rounds? Or however much it takes to restock. I guess I still do have the NFT. 138k, wow. Never mind, I still will keep dropping Jerry Fire. I think one thing I should also do here is Jar Pickles buff the turrets because uh, 
It's the main damage comes from the Jerry Fire, which is a low base damage, but giving it this will make our turns do less damage, but the Jerry Fire does more. So in my IMO, worth it. Also, crap, I maxed out of two genies. Should I sell NFT now? You know what? I, I still think I'll hold off because I'll, I'll get the next genie, I think, at the end of this round. Okay, here's three genies. Based on the way it's going, I think maybe holding on to the uh, action faker is, uh, is an okay choice. I think I cost myself like one extra genie at this point in the game because I lost like... Or I had to wait like four or five more rounds uh, than I did usually. Uh, at some point though, I should just tell because I can get eight more genies, but I'm not going to get eight more genies by like until like round 140 which at that point i might die so you know what now's a good time to sell i'm simply banking like too much cash here <laughs> we certainly saved the best for last didn't we and now we can say we've officially beat round 111 with the help of our six genies and uh, 10 plus jerry fires uh, nice many rounds to go too okay i actually cannot spend all this nft money so uh, i guess i really should have just sold it early for uh, an extra genie at this point in the game but that's okay Here's 119, absolutely destroying that BAD over there. And again, for every turret we get, we put a Jerry Fire, put a Pickle, put a Charming Stone. You know, looking at this, sometimes it is fun when you take off balance modifiers for a second. Don't mind me just trying to spend as, as much of my 130k as I can there. Stacking the exit with Balloon Traps or Blaine Maelstroms, uh, if anything does ever get that far. Here's another turret, which I'll do Jerry Fire, Pickle... Shoving stone when it's up. And right, creepy idols. At this point, I think we have enough creepy idols to basically, like, perma stall stuff. Okay, not quite. But they're certainly doing a good job at the blowback, as you see there. Also, I was just about to pickle Gervaldo to give everything pickle, but that's a bad idea, because remember, um, pickle affects the genie, which you definitely don't want to have reduced attack speed for. If we get enough genies here, we can make, like, a figure, a permanent figure eight <laughs> in the middle of the map. Now, wouldn't that be sick? Also, money alert, we are actually somehow dro dropping dangerously close to not being able to afford our genie. So maybe I'll, I'll, I think I'll stop. No more of the other stuff, just genies. Uh, so that's it. Maybe it was a good thing I held on to the NFT uh, that long. Maybe I should have held on even longer looking at this. Here's round 140, by the way. How much DPS are we looking at on that F pad? You know, with 10 genies, I would have expected more than like 2,000, but oh well, it should be enough, right? Definitely enough. We are now at 13 genies, by the way, which I'm likely going to deplete fully by, like, round 155, provided we make it that far. We're making, like, pennies on the dime, and I still think we have a long way to go. Look how quickly these bats are popping. There is a lot of wiggle room left. Here is genie number 14, and soon to be genie number 15. The struggle is real, though. Can we beat this bad? Come on. Nice. Looking at this, I actually sold my NFT at the perfect time, I think. Adding one extra genie really won't make much difference here. No way I'm going to survive long enough to get a 16th genie, am I? I'm actually only two rounds away, but... I think this round gave us some pretty rough RNG. Three bads. Uh, it might be over here. And indeed it is. So I'll do one last try. With the money, I believe I can get, get myself uh, two uh, turrets. Three turrets, actually. It's going to set me back up for that um, 16th genie. But I gotta do what you can to squeeze rounds out of this. So I'll use a Maelstrom too, the temporary ones. Uh, any little bit of damage helps. That's about all I can do. Uh, glue too, in case it was it was DTs, right? That were killing us. So maybe this would this would help. I don't know. All them down right now. And moment of truth. Glues are helping, but I think we're dead to this. Yep. It was a good run, and a great run to cap off this one hero test with with an absolutely nutty. Permanent item Geraldo with 50 million pops almost. Hope you enjoy the chaos and see you next time.